Welcome. My name is Ken Lacourte. I'm here with John Moody. We are both, or were both, longtime executives at the Fox News Channel. Uh, over the last day or two, we just saw the movie Bombshell, which was all about Fox News, Roger Ailes. It started uh, starred Charlize, Charlize Theron. Uh, who else was in that? Nicole Kidman, Margot Robbie, and John Lithgow as, as Roger Ailes. Uh, we've got some, uh, got a lot of insight on that. We have a little bit of mixed opinion on this. So uh, let's just get going. John, what were your first, uh, what were your first impressions overall? Uh, I think um, I think it was a movie that confirmed every liberal's idea about Fox News and and how how Roger Ailes uh, manipulated the country and and turned Fox News into a weaponized uh, network. Uh, but um, it all it just it just stopped it just failed to make any distinction between the way news operations like Fox and like every other network operate and and what. Hollywood wanted to say it operated like. Now, now, how much of this was really about news? I mean, in that other TV show, Loudest Voice, that was all about that. In this, was it really about news coverage? I mean, with the exception of, of Trump making a Trump versus Megyn Kelly role, did, did you see a lot of, of kind of like Fox manipulating the world like you might have seen in that other TV show? Well, it was very brief, but it was very distinctive. There was a, a scene mm. where the two fictional characters who don't represent real Fox employees, uh, one's played by Kate McKinnon and the other is played by Margot Robbie, uh, are going through the newsroom at a pretty quick walking pace. And uh, Kayla is the, is the supposed employee played by Robbie, uh, is asking, you know, what kind of stories do they want here? And the answer is, you know, yeah. boom, 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 uh, ricochet, you know, gays are bad, uh, faith is good, uh, Republicans are great. If you can great, scare Democrats your grandmother, you love it. If you yeah. can scare yeah. your grandmother, it's a you're Fox right story. And, I, thought that, uh, I thought that you're 100% right on that aspect. That was kind of, in my view, almost the only time that they put that in that movie. And, and whereas, again, on, 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 the, on the Showtime series, the whole series was kind of that, you know, it was, it was written by a liberal who hated Fox News. You're right about that scene, but uh, but that to me was kind of the only time that I really felt that oh geez, here you go with that kind of stuff um, on that. Well, and uh, I mean, I think it's significant that they had to find two fictional people to to, to utter those lines. <sighs> yeah, well, that's never slowed Hollywood down and down in the past. Look, my overall thought on it was, I mean, the first thing is I don't know if this is a good movie for normal people to watch. I mean, for me, it, it was almost like watching home movies. I mean, I knew almost everybody in the movie. So I'm, I'm analyzing it and to, is this actress doing a good job of, of, of portraying this person that I know pretty well or, or the, the set or all of those things. So it was interesting at the end of the movie, I was like, I don't know if a regular person who wasn't involved in this would find this a good movie or not. I, I usually enjoy discussing movies and, and saying this is good or bad, but I truly have no idea if this will be something that, that gets popular because people people dig it or if it's just so inside that that I kind of liked it. So let's well, it, let's start off on – go ahead. Yeah, I mean it, it'll be popular because, because it'll be uh, uh, advertised as, you know – we finally got Roger Ailes up on the screen, and we're now going to crucify him. And it'll get it'll get Academy Award nominations because these are good people who finally, you know, beat a bad person. Maybe, maybe. I mean, you have to then you have to hate Fox News enough to sit through two hours of watching Fox News. I'm not. Don't, uh, don't you maybe live in California? Be an for that. You know, there was only eight to ten people in my theater, and how many people did you say were in yours when you saw it? I, I was the fifth. You were the fifth, and 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 you wrote that that a couple actually didn't make it through the whole movie. Was that true? Two of them walked out. Right. Okay. All right. I didn't think it was it was certainly that bad. There was a couple parts I wanted to scream at the screen, but but overall I thought it was an okay movie. Again, hard to analyze. Look, let's get into the good stuff first. What did you uh, What did you like about it? Did it capture any of Fox's essence and people? And and what what do you think are the good things about this movie? I, I really I have to give credit to the two lead actresses, uh, uh, Charlize Theron and um, uh, well, help me there. <laughs> uh, Margot uh, Margot or Nicole Kidman? No, Nicole Kidman. I mean, right. they're 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 they really did look like Megyn Kelly and Gretchen Carlson. It was yeah. a it was a wonderful makeup job. I thought that uh, Lithgow looked very much like Roger Ailes. Not uh, as much as not as much as in the other in the other film where they where it was almost a dead ringer. Um, I actually yeah. thought the prosthetics were were better in 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 the Showtime thing, but but the yeah, acting there was, was there, better. There was here. a lot of sponge fat in there uh, in in this movie. Um, but uh, um, and and I thought that the the quality of the acting, if if that's how we're going to describe it, 
it was better than the, the Showtime miniseries. Right. Um, I thought that um, just some of the background stuff, Roger's office, much closer uh, resemblance to the real office. Uh, right. They did make a few mistakes. There never was a secret elevator that went up to his office. Uh, you That's know, there, fun there to just hear. wasn't en- there wasn't enough room in that building or that office for there to be a secret elevator. Right. Uh, right. And there's no and there's no such thing as a black room where people's uh, oh, we'll um, get that telephone recordings were, were being made. Right, right. So, look, I, I actually thought this movie did was a little bit more fair and balanced than I expected, to be perfectly honest. I mean, I mean, look, it's clearly about the the fall of Fox News, uh, excuse me, the fall of Roger Ailes by three super heroines. And so you kind of knew that. And, and all the characters were. But I guess this is, you know, I guess you can't make a movie without making people somewhat cartoonish. They, they were often, you know, oh, this is the good person. This is the bad person. But I but I. But here was a chance where I, a time where they actually did make it better. Um, um, you know, with Roger, although he was clearly the bad guy who was abusing women in this movie. And, and, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about how much that's true and how much we saw of that. There were also nods to a lot of why people loved him so much. I mean, even the, the Megyn Kelly character, they had her saying, you know, he's the first one to help somebody out when they're having drug problems or the, or the first one. And, you know, she went kind of on a roll. Um, um, you, know, he was, you know, he was the one that when Shep Smith came out as, as, as gay and even before that was like, hey, I'm not going to tell him where to put his dick if he doesn't tell me where to put mine. Um, um, you had another character say that when she was in the hospital, this was uh, this was uh, Susan Estrich, that Roger called her her doctor every day for four weeks to to get her get you know get things going. And and you know for from those of us and, and on my side who saw the great parts of Roger and didn't really see any of this stuff until until well after it until it came out into into the open. And again, some of it I believe, some of it I don't. But that was kind of good to have. So, so I don't know. I, I, I felt that there was that. I felt that there, outside of that one, that one scene of, of, uh, of, of, the, of the mentor saying how much everybody at Fox News was faking it, that, that, that there, was some, there was some good elements to that. Did, did that affect you? Did you see that? I, I didn't see it as much as you did. Um, mm-hmm. To my mind, he, Roger is portrayed as a sexual monster. And, uh, you know, there, there, there wasn't any attention given to how hard he had to work to create and build Fox News and then turn it into the winner that it was. Yeah, I mean, look, this wasn't trying to be a this wasn't trying to be a biopic of him or a biopic of the Fox News Channel. It, this was really from the from the point kind of right before the Republican convention to this whole thing kind of kind of falling apart. This this wasn't the rise and fall of Fox News. It was the fall of Roger Ailes. Other things. So so again, I, and I will also say that that I hated the Showtime series. The Showtime series was written by people who hated Fox News. It was clear they hated Fox. They hated Roger, and they they were rolling around in pig shit because they got to they got to make a, a mini series on it. I didn't get the same same feeling from this. Um, um, this was, slight, this was slightly higher quality, which is what you would expect from a full-length motion picture. I guess. Uh, I guess. The, the, again, I, I give credit to the actors and actresses in it. Uh, I thought they were, I thought several of them, and, and, and by the way, a, a huge round of applause to Malcolm McDowell for his portrayal of Rupert Murdoch. That right. was as close to, to spot on as you can get in a movie. Yeah, it didn't um, really look a whole, whole lot like him with the craggy nose and all that. I'm not quite sure why they went that way with that. Yeah, but, I'm not sure what you can do about noses, but, uh, but his, his, his manner of speaking and his, his, his air of command right. when, when Roger was, was pulled into his apartment for, right. you know, for, for right. firing, uh, I thought was spot on. So this started really with the, with the, the lawsuit by, Megan, by um, um By Gretchen Gretchen. Carlson. So let me give a little bit of background to that. Now, again, my biases, just to make this clear, um, Roger was like a second father to me. Um, Roger, I worked for since the time I was 22 years old and worked on and off, mostly on for almost 30 years. Um, I and, and I think most executives there never saw or heard. I never heard a whisper of Roger doing anything inappropriate towards women. I mean, he'd tell ribald jokes and, and there'd be a little of that, but nothing, nothing at all like any of this, where, where now there's kind of this, this belief out in the world that, well, everybody knew about it. It was big grab-ass culture, and, 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 and that's just not true. And they kind of alluded to that in this movie, and they did a couple things that I thought were, were really bad about it. Um, but, you know, when this popped up, 
And and when Gretchen Carlson was the first one to come out on this, I mean, look, I was one of the people who had for years been telling them to cancel her show. I, I didn't like her, not as a human being, but but as the way as a human being, the way that she the way that she did her show. I felt that she came off as cold, which Nicole Kidman actually captured a lot of that. I felt that when she tried to be nice on her show, it came off as sickly sweet and fake. And that's why it was one of the lowest rated things during during the day. And and it was like, to me, it was a trough in the middle of the day. And I was one of the executives saying, God, that show sucks. Why do we have this purple thing with this gal being kind of kind of kind of not connecting with an audience? Um, you know, they didn't they didn't kind of make that point in the movie. But I actually think Nicole Kidman's character captured a little bit of that. Well, that's but what I'm let's saying. Go, she, she, she did a great acting job. And, and yeah, she yeah no, out, all of all of them she did. brought out the good and the bad. And, and Charlize Theron was 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 just on target with with Megyn Kelly to the best uh, best of best of my knowledge um, mm. and, and my my limited interaction with Megan. So the, thing, the I want to talk about some of the negative things because the, the time that I really felt like throwing my popcorn at the screen was the way that they treated uh, uh, one of the other senior executives there, Bill Shine. Um, so Bill Shine was was seen by many as possibly the heir apparent to Roger. Um, and from my point of view, and I dealt with him, and we weren't buddies. We're, we're probably, you know, we, we, we were friendly, but not friends. He was, tr- he was created in this movie as, as a half pervert. And mm-hmm. to me, that was, it was unethical. It was wrong. It was like, you know, you have all this stuff going on. You have some real stories. And, and they had to make, so Bill Shine, who was one of the straightest lace guys I know. He played by the book as often as I could see him throughout his entire life. There was never a hint of any kind of impropriety with him and anyone else. He got pulled up in some of the lawsuits because people said, well, you were trying to protect Roger or whatnot, which I don't even believe that either because Roger was a paranoid guy. If he was doing dirty things, he wasn't going to let the guy who might, who might zap him out of the job, he wasn't going to let him in on it. Roger, Roger was, was, was smart. I mean, that's just human psychology that, uh, on that. But when they had Bill Shine close off the blinds on the Margot Robbie, char- Robbie character and sit too close to her, and after she said something, he, he touched her knee a little, a little weird, I was like, fuck you. I mean, that was so nasty that, that the movie people should be ashamed at that. And then the very last scene of the movie, Rupert goes to make the speech saying, Roger's gone, and, and, but I'm keeping a lot of my team. And he looks over his shoulder, and there's Bill Shine there. And that's when the one character, she's had enough, and she walks off, drops her, her ID in there. I thought that that was, um, I thought that that was awful and terrible. You have yeah, any, you have any, but but again, I mean, it, it fit the perception uh, that Hollywood has of, of Fox News and of Roger Ailes perfectly. Uh, and, yeah, and I just now, thought it was against one person and it was wrong. And it well, was, and, and, and let's also say that Bill Shine had to do a lot of stuff that was difficult to do. Not all of it was illegal. Not all of it was, was uh, sexual in nature. He, it was illegal. And right. I mean, he, he had to go and tell people, we're not renewing you. He had to go and tell people. Yeah, I mean, look, he was a senior executive there who had to do tough things. And he had but, a tough job. Um, yeah, he did. He did. But again, for them to do that, anyhow, that was the only part out of that where I was like, that's shameful. This movie shouldn't have done that. Um, and it falls into another scene that just made Fox look bad. And, and, and it was, a, again, it's like, why did they have to go here on it? And, and it was a scene in which um, uh, Rudy Bakhtier, who was a correspondent, a fairly short-lived correspondent for Fox News, is, is in a restaurant or a bar with her new boss. And her new boss was the, the, her, 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 her bureau chief there, who basically said, hey, one of the qualifications of this job is we have to sleep with each other. I want to see the inside of, of your hotel room. And, and from what I understand, and I don't know all the exact facts on that, that was actually a somewhat, somewhat true account of what happened. New boss, he kind of displayed crazy, over-the-top behavior. But then in the movie, 60 seconds later, you see her getting fired. And it was like, and, and you, you were left with the impression that she reported this or whatnot or didn't sleep with him and she gets fired. Well, the reality was quite different. First of all, he was fired and, and he was fired by you. And she eventually was, was, was not renewed on her contract because she just wasn't that good of a journalist, not because of anything like that. Now, you know more about this story. What can, what can you let us uh, know on that part? Yeah, I mean, the, to, to suggest that, that this correspondent took the weight uh, for whatever went on between her and and the bureau chief is uh, it, it it messes up the chronology pretty seriously. She stayed on after this guy was fired. 
Right. Um, Anyhow, they, they had to do that because they needed to make it look like Fox News Correct. mistreated women and all that stuff. Correct. Um, um, and, and I was she, bothered by it. she was not fired. Uh, her contract was not renewed, and there is a difference right. there. Um, right. Both sides agree to a contract, and they both say when the contract's over, we can each do what we want. Uh, right. Fox decided to do what it wanted. Um, and uh, all I can say is, I, I mean, once, once the reality of what had happened between those two was made known— uh, the bureau chief didn't last very long at all. Right. And the irony of that was her her agent alluded to that in a conversation with Bill Shine. And, and according to her own legal filings, which I read, Bill Shine said, hey, we have a zero tolerance for, for that. She needs to go to HR and, 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 and deal with this. And then I also understand that she was very reluctant to do that. And HR had to kind of go after her to, to kind of find out what was going on there. Again, a very different creating of an atmosphere thing. Um, I felt Beth Ailes, Roger's wife, was, uh, was once again kind of horribly mistreated. She was uh, in, in the opening scene, literally in the opening 30 seconds of it, she, she snippily tells one, one employee of hers at, at, at a local newspaper that, uh, that she ran uh, not to wear hoodies because when you're working for us, you don't wear hoodies, i.e. don't dress like black people, even though he wasn't black. Uh, and then she's sitting at her desk and, and somebody starts to eat off us and she says, what are you eating? And she's like, store-bought sushi. It, it's it's not liberal food. So, look, I know Beth pretty well. Beth Beth's politically conservative. I, I Maybe she went after people because they ate liberal food like sushi, but I thought that that was, uh, that was an odd and, and kind of a little bit of an unfair way to open up a character on that was that I hate hoodies and I hate liberal sushi. Well, Ken, I think, I think the reason that I'm uh, even less supportive of, of the movie than, than you are is that that's what they relied on. They relied on tropes. They relied on stereotypes to make their points because it took too much effort to actually do it the way it was. I guess part of me is, 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 a, little, is, is a little forgiving on that because it's like, it is a movie. You've got to tell a pretty complex story with a lot of characters in, a, in an hour 48. Um, and, and you, seemed you, I, seemed you know. longer to me. <laughs> okay, so one of the, the other things that I, that I had, so, so look, Everybody was, that I was involved with, and this would have been hundreds of people that I, that I knew very well at the Fox News Channel, was, was very surprised when the Gretchen lawsuit came. Um, I read her lawsuit. Um, um, I felt it was kind of weak in, in the sense that, that she had obviously been recording him for at least a year. And, and she had a lot of quotes in there, and you can kind of tell in a complaint. Now, she said years back, he said, sleep with me and it'll help get a job. But then she started, I think once she saw that her ratings weren't good, that there were, there were rumblings around, she decided to start recording people. I believe she recorded people, um, um, you know, multiple people within the, Fox, within the Fox, Fox News Channel. That's legal in New York. Um, but then when you read through her complaint, the worst kind of quote that was there was Roger said to her, Hey, you know, years ago, you should, we should have slept together. It would have been good for you and good for me or something very similar. The rest of the stuff that, that she had recorded him saying was, you know, it was either nasty towards some other, other, uh, other on-air talent or something like that. But literally she went a year and that was the most egregious kind of sexual thing that she ever got him saying on there. Whereas they made it in the movie look like, oh, they got him. And it was kind of like, and, and look, I talked to, to, I talked to lawyers who was like, that's, that's a hard case to win. Now she got $20 million, um, which there's a whole separate story on that because – the Murdochs were fearful that Roger was going to leave them, take a couple of the talent away, start up his own news channel. So, so they overpaid that, and they also had an insurance policy. So while it sounds like, oh, my gosh, they paid this and they paid that, they didn't pay anything. They had, they had that covered on the back end, but they were also using that as a bludgeon, um, 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 the Murdoch kids, as a bludgeon to, to, to hit Roger and make him, make him look even worse than, than, than the facts that came out. Um, you know, the concept that Gretchen was all that harmed on it was, was kind of not there. And then there was the Megyn Kelly character who, who, you know, it's tough to know exactly how much to trust Megyn Kelly. I mean, I mean, I don't want to call anybody a liar, and I'm not saying what she said didn't happen, but there were multiple versions of, of, of reality that I've heard from Megyn Kelly. I mean, I mean, you know, one thing that, that I had heard from a, another, another inside source at Fox News who I completely trusted was... Megan was caught once lying to the lying to a, a major newspaper about one of her colleagues there to imply that that colleague was losing that job and that Megan Kelly would do that. So that Megan Kelly would take over that that position. So, 
you know, when you see her crying on TV 10 years later or even after when she was getting fired from NBC, you know, she she had the audacity to say that not every kid at Halloween who puts blackface on is a racist. And that freaked everybody out at NBC. She was at NBC, right? Yeah. OK. You know, she was crying the next day. Now I realize. So, you know, she could turn on and off the waterworks and she could certainly change reality to fit her own PR. Um, so. While I do believe, and, and I've come to, 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 to only learn this, you know, well after kind of some of the allegations, I, I think that Roger did behave very inappropriately to some women there. I, I don't think it was these big stars who, A, deserve the money or B, deserve all, all, all the tears on it. If there were women like that that, that happened to, and I, I, I believe there were, it was more like that Margot, what's, what's her name again? Margot Robbie, Robbie, Robbie character a young gal who was trying to get into get into the into the uh, you know into the TV world and and Roger hit on her in in inappropriate right. ways. I do believe that there was some like that. Um, I don't know them directly, but I know people enough that that I kind of believe some of that. What's well, your overall it, thoughts on it, on those characters? Yeah, it's a good thing that the movie began with a written statement across the screen saying while this is based on historical fact, some some uh exceptions have been made and some fictionalization right. has taken place right. it's a good thing because that's really what the movie was about um yeah and like and like like you told me earlier it's like when it was a closed door session between roger and a fictional character and now a dead guy it's kind of hard to kind of hard to say that didn't happen i mean right, you, you right. Know, you can't. so but i mean you know the fictional character can't sue them and neither can roger now so right. so they got away with it um, but i tell you <clears throat> i think sorry, that i think that the the interesting thing in real life now is that this movie and the um the central role that it gives the megan kelly character and i'm saying character because she's being played by somebody else um has opened up a rift apparently between her and gretchen carlson you know who got rid of roger ailes i did no i did it was me that did it no i did it you wouldn't have gotten anywhere if i hadn't come out and, and agreed with you it, and and it's I won't call it humorous because there's nothing, it's not, it's not that, but, but there is a, a, a kind of divine justice that's being played out here wow. uh, as, you know, long after the events. The, 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 Roger, the, the biggest job that Roger Ailes probably had there was probably stopping the talent from killing each other. I mean, that was half of it is you've got multimillionaires who are popular, who you rely on in different time slots and who are always sending nasty notes to each other. And why did I get this guest? Why didn't he get, I mean, you know, it seemed like a lot of his life was, was, you know, keeping, keeping them from, you know, from, from trashing each other in public, which they've started to do more and more since. And, uh, and, since, it, and since it was something was that he did better than any other executive that I've ever known. He, he could use a combination of fear. He could play on their own personal insecurities. And sometimes he could be incredibly supportive and understanding right. and listen to their right. complaints. And I thought that they brought some of that into it. I mean, you know, hearing John Lithgow, a lot of the things that his character said were things that I'd heard from Roger mm -hmm. about, uh, you know, and they showed some of his some of his, you know, good meetings with with Megan and the advice that he gave her. Look, I was there when he was when he was protecting Megan against Donald Trump. And, and that whole thing came out. I mean, you know, all of that felt pretty close to reality. She wanted him to do a few more things. He was fighting hard. He was screaming at Trump behind the scenes. He was, you know, he, he wasn't letting his anchor get beat up without kicking back. On the other hand, he realized this is Donald Trump and, and his rising presidency and Fox News. I mean, there was a, there was a lot of, of factors at play. And I, I felt that that was pretty on track. What, what, what were you, you know, you, yeah, you were probably uh, more I mean, in some of those conversations. Uh, you, uh, I certainly his, <clears throat> his defense of his own people uh, be it against uh, uh, Rupert sometimes or Donald Trump uh, is very real and it's a very real part of his legacy. Um, right. I don't think there's a whole lot of shouting back at Donald Trump going on these days uh, over at Fox. But, um, you know, it's he he had a way of dealing with people because he understood people's makeup and their insecurities. And he played mm -hmm. them and he played them very well. So I, I like the, the Lithgow character better than I had liked the Russell Crowe character. The Russell mm -hmm. Crowe character, it was always kind of a brooding Roger Ailes that I, I, I never really saw all that much. I think Lithgow got half of it right. He got a lot of that kind of father, good fatherly advice um, in, addition to, in addition to the bad stuff. Uh, what they both missed was, was Roger's humor. Um, right. um, and, and, and I don't know if that was intentional or just, you know, they'd never met him or how, how that worked. I mean, 
you know, Roger was kind of, you know, when you left half of his meetings, uh, you, you know, there, there was always a huge amount of humor. You know, you, how many times did we joke that we should have that we should have aired our staff meetings because they would have they would have been good on the Comedy Central or or a news station, either either one. Or I guess sometimes those are those are merging merging these days. Yeah. That was the only thing that I felt was kind of missing from that that character. Um, sure. I mean, Roger's humor was legendary. Uh, it was not always uh, inoffensive. Uh, sometimes it, it, it got very close to the to the grain. Um, right. And and he, I, I can't remember a single day that I was with him when he didn't use you know some sort of vulgarism. But that's right. just uh, that's just how he talked. Uh, right. But his humor was indisputable. And and even if you were the butt of one of his jokes, you had to laugh because they were just right. so well placed. He, he was he was like a pitcher that knew how to throw it right over the black part of the plate. Right. Look, I thought the acting was excellent. I, I, I you know, Margot Margot Robbie was you know when when she was. When she was breaking down outside of the restaurant because, you know, she was telling her her friend that, that she had kind of succumbed to this, that was a pretty emotional scene. And and it, and it drove home and, 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 and in, in a good way, it drove home. This is this is what sexual harassment does to somebody or at least can. I mean, it did to her again. I don't know if it did it to all of the ones who I mean, and, and just, you know, people at the end of of, of this Fox any woman who had, there were a lot of lawsuits by a lot of people who were completely full of shit. I mean, I saw some of them 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 directly. Um, um, I was I was I was offended at the uh, uh, the the big lawyer here. What was her name? Uh, Nancy, Nancy Erica, Erica Smith. Smith. You know, they made her out to look like like a saint. Well, on a totally unrelated matter, uh, it had to do with a story that I killed about Donald Trump. I saw this woman on TV calling me a liar. And just making shit up. I mean, and and she was doing that to get attention. It was basically a story I killed. She said somebody else did a, above me and whatnot, and was and and literally went on national TV and just made shit up. And so it was a little tricky for me to look at somebody who was being faded as 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 a conscious in this movie, when when at least my limited interaction with her, I found her to be immoral and 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 awful. But uh, but the acting all around was great on it, and I think it, it brought up a lot of a, a lot of interesting issues. Yeah, I, I would just go back to my original point and my, my major complaint about it. Yes, that breakdown in front of a restaurant was very dramatic. And yes, it, it gave you a little insight into what sexual harassment can do. And they had to use a fictional character to pro- portray it. That's fair. That's fair. Um, yeah, I, I, I wonder if they did that for legal reasons or if they just needed a, a, a composite figure or, or what that was. But um, Again, it it is a movie, and and as you said, they kind of they kind of at least owned up to that at the beginning, which 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 I think was was kind of a good thing too. Yeah. yeah. Hey, so that's it with me. Um, um, we've got a lot of videos here. I'd like you to look around the channel if you uh, if you like what you see. Please subscribe to what we're doing. Uh, Le Court News publishes. Look, we spent a lot of time looking at the media, looking at what's fair, what's fake, what's real, what's not coming out of the media. We're spending a lot of time with with. With censorship from Facebook and Twitter and others, which which I and we think is 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 a big issue coming up in this country. It's an issue that's big now and it's getting even bigger. So please stick around. We will have more videos like this and other looks at at the media. I think we're probably done with Fox for right about now, but uh, well, we'll we'll see what next week brings. And just and just wait till the movie on Facebook comes out. <laughs> All right, John. Thanks. All right. Bye bye.